see that there are so many visitors here. It's really good. Uh, this is the first exhibition of a whole season of exhibitions this uh, summer. Uh, and there's a list on the wall there of the other artists who will be coming. Each month we'll have a, a new exhibition. But I'm so pleased to uh, introduce you to uh, Patrick, who's brought these amazing holograms for us to see. And he's kindly agreed to tell us a little bit about it and explain the physics of it. <laughs> right, okay. So can um, I can well, I hand over to you? Yeah, I don't know if I can easily explain the physics about them at all, but uh, I can talk about the technique just a little bit. It's, um, although I uh, struggle with the fact that whenever I show the work, people always want to talk about how they're made rather than what they're about. So, um, yeah, uh, basically... I'll start off by saying I'd like to think my holograms are about everyday life, but obviously they're not, because there's two different types. So the animated ones, I like to think are about everyday day life. They're a kind of documentary recording that records time and motion and 3D, and although they're very modern and scientific, they have a kind of nostalgic, kind of Nickelodeon effect. Um, I don't know why, but uh, people just... So the first one I made was of a train coming into a station after the Lumiere brothers. So um, my inspiration has been a film called Man with a Movie Camera, which is by a guy called Vertov, who's exploring the idea of cinema and how it would develop, and not just be a kind of recording of a play, but just see how people reacted in everyday life. So that's where I guess I just film things and see if they're interesting and then make them into little holograms as a documentary medium. The other holograms are very different in the way they're recorded and uh, well the animated ones come from well, iPhone footage basically about four seconds of motion. The other ones are recorded with a ruby pulse laser which the duration of the light burst of light is 30 nanoseconds and so it freezes everything and that's a bit like making art in a photo booth. You just, it's a very scientific setup. You have a laser set up and you just have a space a bit like this and you have to take everything in. So obviously, everyday life isn't really suitable. Although I have done a hologram of a kitchen sink drama. <laughs> try to recreate, but generally that, I tend to go into the realms of fantasy and my themes recently have been movies, though, so it's all linked to movie making. Um, Which of the two? The four. That, that, that one's a pulsed one. So yeah, the, uh, so yeah, literally built a set in a room like this and had a laser that flashes very brief. It's all done in the dark and uh, very kind of hit and miss, I guess. So it's that one and the three in there. The three in there, yes. yes, yes, yes. And um, yeah, anyway, the technique. Uh, <laughs> So it's all based on interference of two light sources meeting each other. So um, it's the old equation, a plus and a plus equals a plus, a minus and a minus equals a plus, and a plus and a minus equals a minus. <coughs> so you get two photons of light happily traveling, traveling along. They bump into each other, and if they're both on a crest, it equals double the amount of light. And if they're both on a trough, it equals double the amount of light. But if one's on a trough, trough, crest and one's on a trough, then they cancel out and get no light. And actually, you can shine two beams of laser light onto the wall. But if you do it, you've got to set it up correctly. And uh, if they overlap and everything's very stable, you can actually get black lines where the light is kind of <coughs> counter-reacting. You know. So, and, yeah. So basically, photons of light either add up or cancel out, and that's what you do when you make a hologram. You have two light sources. You have the light that has the information of the object, and that's reflect. So the light you shine the laser beam onto the object, and the laser light reflects off onto a photographic plate, and at the same time, another beam of light hits the plate directly. And where the photons of light meet, they either add up or cancel out and you record that photographically 
high on a kind of light sensitive material, develop it and it doesn't look like anything, but then if you hold it under a laser beam exactly the same angle as the undisturbed light was in the recording, the hologram then recreates the other light source, which was the light reflected off the object. And that's the science, and now you can all make one yourselves. <laughs> Very easy, in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it from paper. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah so that's what it's all about. So, um, But you told me you've got this plate with pneumatic, a pneumatic yes, base. Yes, it's yes. It's not disturbed by anything. Yes, yes, so um, basically um, during the exposure nothing on, in the setup must move to more than a quarter of the wavelength of light. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. There's a lot of science going on there. So, uh, but I'm not a scientist, so... But you've obviously got a lot of science going on there, Yeah. you understand. So how do you make No, I don't really understand it. We just explained it. No, I mean, how, to how make, you make a the leap between the science and the creativity. Um, well, I just do everything intuitively. Okay. There's so you must understand the science? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> yeah. Because but you don't really understand the science of a camera. No. You take photographs. No, but you understand the science of pigments. Uh, well, I don't under understand the science of holography or how a laser works at all. Um, but I know there are certain rules that I have to follow. Okay, and is that science? I'm sorry, I'm yes. sorry, I always have to call for the question. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> Yeah, it, it's a technique. You have, so you I have, have to, you have to understand it. a certain amount of the science in order to exploit it. Not really, no, not really. What, does it matter? Yeah, exactly. No. No. Did you get trained at the University of the <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I mean, I went to art school. Mm. Yes, I did a lot of art school, yeah. yeah. So, um, I, I learned what works and what doesn't, and, uh, Basic rule is keep it simple, stupid, whatever, kiss, whatever. And um, yeah, there are just certain rules you have to follow when you um, work with lasers, and you just got to learn, you know, not to over tighten anything because that puts stress on everything, and just be very patient and uh, just learn how to do it. It's a bit like pottery or something, you have to learn how to do it. So it's like which art school? Went to Farno in Surrey and then the Royal College. But I, got, I was looking for a job as a photographer's assistant years ago and got a job in a holography studio by Max. And then they started the course at the Royal College and I did that. And um, I'm not really um, a technique person in that rack. Right? I just grew into it. Very well. That ice cream one's good. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I really like that one. It's a special camera. Uh, the, the, all the animated ones are shot on my phone. Oh, I see. Yeah. Nice. Just your phone. Just my phone, yeah. So, um, and you use software, do you too? 